Welcome back to Andrew and Melissa's tiny house. This update today is going to be about our wood stove. Okay, so wood stoves and other forms of heat. Why did we decide to go with a wood stove over, say for example, propane or electric heat? Um, okay, so there's, there's, there's a couple things I'm thinking right now, which is that uh, my wife Melissa, she really likes it to be hot. And she likes it to be easy to make it hot. <laughs> and so um, an electric heater um, would have required a lot of electricity to run that heater. And right now we only have three solar panels, each 160 watts. And so that in itself would definitely not have run an electric heater. So that so an electric heater was out of the question. It was kind of between a propane heater slash wood stove heater or wood pellet heater and um, just like a regular wood stove heater or wood stove that took wood. And um, the reason that we didn't go with propane was because we'd rather stay away from gas as much as possible. And um, the wood stove is also simple. You just put wood in it, start a fire, and as long as you have the right safety measures in place, that it's very safe. And so it's worked great. And um, wood, you know, is $200 for one winter for a cord. And if you can get kindling and paper for free, then you're not really, it's $200 for the whole winter, which is really great. Melissa and I didn't want to mess around. We went with the wood stove, and it's working out really great. I hope that's clear. I'm just gonna start by showing how um, we go out and get our little kindling. So as you can see, it's still bright out and it is getting close to 3.30 in the afternoon, Eastern time, and um, here I go. This piece, I'm gonna put it right, right here. Actually right here is good. Now all I'm gonna do is just simply stop on it like this, like that. See how that just cracked? There we go. Okay, so we've got our kindling. Um, now we're gonna go in and um, see about starting a fire for this evening. Okay, so the first thing to go over is the fire lighters that we use each day to start our fire. We use these ones that you can see here from If You Care. And basically they're environmental and they're more non-toxic than more, more conventional ones. And so we feel good about those. Um, if you wanna know more about this um, brand, um, you can um, look at their website, which is right in this link, right, right here. Okay, here we go. Now light the light the fire up. One match. See how well we do. So I've got the kindling in there. I've got some paper. It's all pretty tight. Here's the fire. It's starting. And um, we'll go back to you when it's when it's more up and, and running. Okay, so here's our little mini stove tool kit that we bought from Lowe's. And um, it just has the basics. It has a little shovel here that you can scoop the ashes out when um, the stove is kind of full of ashes and it needs to be um, emptied. And then you've got the little pokey tool. That's the one that we use the most. And it's to help move logs around if they're in the wrong spot or to help um, just adjust things so that they're, they're in the proper place without getting your hands um, too hot. And of course, anytime we use the tools, we use the gloves as well. These gloves are good. They are also from Lowe's and um, they're, just, they're just really good and protective of your hands. And lastly, we have a brush, which I mostly don't use. Here's our handy little hatchet. Um, it's um, the Fiskars brand, F-I-S-K-A-R-S.com. Click, um, click right here for the link for that. Um, this is a great little hatchet, and um, this is what we use to cut up our firewood for kindling. Here's our little kindling bucket, and right now we just have a whole bunch of paper in it. Um, but anytime we have kindling or even have large logs, we, um, we carry them and bring them into the house that way so that they're in one nice tidy spot. Our burn indicator is another important part of the stove. It, the fire stays um, right below, um, on the left side of this line here, this white line, one like that. On this side, 
then you are in the creosote zone. So basically, it's going to encourage the particles that are going off the flue to stick to the side of the wall flue. And so you don't want that. And so as long as you can get the fire, this little needle to up to the burn zone between three and like 500 degrees, you can see right in, um, in this area right here. You can keep your fire right in there. That's good because anything hotter is gonna be an over fire. And typically speaking, we'll get the fire between three and 400 degrees and we don't really want it up to 400 because it's too hot. So usually right a little bit into the burn zone is good because the house will get up to like, gosh, 80 degrees, 85 degrees, and then we have to open the windows. We also like to keep our house safe um, with two fire extinguishers and two um, carbon monoxide and one smoke detector. So let me just show you over here, here and right by the door, we have our smoke, uh, our, yeah, our carbon monoxide detector, which is the readout, which is helpful, and our um, fire extinguisher right there. The smoke carbon monoxide combo detector up there, which is right before our lock, and then you have the fire extinguisher right here, and that is right as you can see on the top above the top step. So if we're stuck in the loft and can't get down the steps to the stove, then we have the other fire extinguisher um, up there so that we can just grab it and hopefully put the fire out. is isn't so easy to see, but the flue um, that was installed is made up of that black box that you see that was put into the wall with proper clearance from combustibles and you have all of the different flue sections. If I zoom in right here, you can see where they are connected. And um, there's these special screws that screw through the metal flue and screw them together, basically. So we have one section, two sections right there, and then um, even a third section that then reaches down to all the little adapter pieces that we had to get. And so each of these goes for about seven to eight dollars at um, Tractor Supply, or even at Lowe's. You can get them at any like hardware place. And um, and and then the adapter pieces go right to the stove. And the only thing that you really need, other than screws to put this all together, is um, the stove putty. And it's like a stove cement you can buy from again Tractor Supply or Lowe's sells it. And basically this putty that you smear around any holes and you can see there's some right there just so that it helps the smoke um, from escaping any of the holes that might exist in, um, in the wood stove itself. The wood stove is a Scandia 150 and um, it's borrowed from a friend that we have that lives locally and he was very, very generous to let us borrow it for the entire winter. Um, the Scandia 150 is a company that is now Yodel. So if you're familiar with like the Yodel, the latest Yodel. So the stove that we're planning to get is going to be called the Dwarf 5KW. Now I've done a ton of research online about wood stoves and what's proper for a tiny house. And honestly, everything out there is either too small or too big and so this guy Nick from the tinywoodstoves.com has started a really awesome company he and his wife and family live in a tiny house and they, they custom designed this dwarf stove based on a model in Europe so I thought that was really cool in the future you might be able to get this stove and be able to have hot water and an oven all in one, which is pretty awesome. And um, you can find the link right here. It costs just under $1,000 and most likely a little over $1,000 once you add in all the accessories and shipping and all of that. We have a little um, tea kettle that we purchased and um, it was about $20. And it's basically, you know, for hot water, for oatmeal or things like that. We have this beautiful, um, pot, a Cuisinart um, pot that we got from uh, TJ Maxx and it's about 30 or so dollars. 
it was um, slightly cracked, but we don't we don't mind. It still works, and um, you're able to then put this on top of the stove with even with the tea kettle on there, and you can make soups or you can make um, rice or whatever you need to make. It's pretty nice. So we tried to have about one fire each evening or each night, and depending on what time we get back, and we usually start with at least one, usually two pieces of wood inside the stove, usually not more than that, usually that's all it fits. And we put a few pieces of kindling, some paper, and one to two of those fire letters that I showed you. And, and then um, usually we put one to two pieces in, um, in the evening, as it gets closer to when we go to bed, and that's usually sufficient before you go to bed to try to check to make sure that the damper is closed, as long as there's no more flame. So that the wood stove can keep as much heat as it can inside. You um, latch it like that. Now, it's important as soon as you can to close the door because um, the more warmth you can keep inside the stove, the, the faster it's going to heat up and then the more the fire will be able to thrive in the really hot environment. Okay, here we are. We're about to go and check out the chimney flue at the top of the roof. And that was made of um, triple wall flue that is a little less than three feet off the roof. And so, so far it's working for us. And we have a chimney cap. So this is where the generator is going to get a little loud, probably hard to hear me, but I'll do my best. So. There you can see. Okay, so here you can see actually the smoke amidst the trees. It's a little bit difficult, but if you focus, you can see the smoke coming out, which is a good thing. Here is our wood pile. Now, if you go back to mid-November of last year, this pile was full. There was three full stacks. You can see the first stack is basically gone. The second stack is more than halfway gone. And the third stack, it's mostly there and so we have about a month and a half it's now mid-January so we have all of February and half of January to get through before March when it starts to get warmer again um, but this whole cord of wood cost us $200 which is a little bit um, less expensive than most people um, can find um, usually it's cost at least $250 the only other thing that's been challenging is that not all the pieces are short enough for our wood stove. And so there's been times where you have to take a piece and like angle it up a little bit, up up the wood stove, so that it'll actually fit. And um, that's the, our solution for right now. So we've been kind of just going day by day and seeing how it goes, but it's been working out actually really well in terms of the stove giving heat. And so we're really happy.